Friday. It's party day. Right here on the Morning Pit, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. Excited to be here with you for another edition of the Morning Pit Mailbag. It's always one of my favorite days of the week. We take all the questions from Pit fans on the message boards at pantalair.com and we talk about it right here on the Morning Pit Mailbag, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. Com. We got great questions this week. Of course, you'll, you'll never believe it, but there's questions about transfers and NIL and win totals and all those kinds of topics. That's uh, that's the normal thing. That's what we do. It's always a good time. We always enjoy it. And hopefully you enjoy asking the questions and hearing the, the questions answered as well. Of course, summer's here and the time is right for backshore apparel. You remember, I've talked about backshore apparel before. You see the sweet hat I've got on today? Yeah. Does that not look nice? You like that color? This is their hail hat. Good name, right? Um, and it, the thing with Backshore is it's all, it's like beach tech uh, it is the best way to describe it. They've revamped the trucker hat, really. A modern twist on a classic favorite. Uh, innovative laser cut hats that are crafted from moisture whip wicking fabrics, ensuring they're lightweight and breathable. Um, you can experience the ultimate durability and unique floating feature when you select a Backshore hat. In addition to the hats, they don't just have hats at BackshoreApparel.com, but the Backshore Beach Tech hoodies are the perfect combination of style and functionality. They're crafted with flex fabrics to keep you cool and shielded from harmful sun rays. The breathable material ensures you feel fresh all day long while the stain-resistant protection keeps your hoodie looking new for longer. And let's not forget how incredibly soft they are. Uh, Backshore, of course, owned by Mike. He's a huge Pitt fan, a Pitt grad, a big Pitt fan, supporter of Alliance 412 and all those things. And he's actually giving you a discount. If you use the promo code PITT10, P-I-T-T-1-0, at BackshoreApparel.com, you can get 10% off your order. So go over to BackshoreApparel.com, check out the hats, check out the um, sweatshirts, the beach tech hoodies. Uh, I shouldn't even call it a sweatshirt. It's a beach tech hoodie is, is really what it is. And I, I can't wait to wear this at the beach. I mean, this is the perfect hat for beach wear. You see, you see that? I'm so excited to take this thing to the beach this summer. It's going to be great. And you can get yours as well. Remember pit 10 P I T T one O is a discount code to get 10% off your order at backshoreapparel.com. They support the podcast. We appreciate them. So you should go check it out. Big pit fan, Mike running the show at Backshore and making some great, great products. Backshoreapparel.com. Let's get into your questions now on the Morning Pit Mailbag, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. Yeah, it's always fun to do these uh, Morning Pit Mailbags. I always like doing it on Friday. I, I say the same thing every week. I mean, it kind of, it takes a little bit of the work off of my shoulders of not having to come up with another topic, although this week kept providing new topics. It was pretty easy to uh, come up with topics this week. There was always something new to talk about. Um, but we get to Friday, and it's nice. I don't I don't have to think about the topics. You guys decide the topics. You um, put it out there and you know ask the questions on the message words at pantalar.com, and we answer as many as we can. I always look forward to doing it. It's, it's fun uh, to hear what you guys are thinking about, what you want to talk about, not just what I want to talk about. Um, it's always enjoyable to... Uh, to, to do these. So if you want to make, if you want to ask a question for the morning pit mailbag, go to the website, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com to get all the pit sports coverage and then get on the message boards and ask questions, get in the conversation, interact with other pit fans and uh, contribute to the, mo the mailbag. It's always a, a good time. Uh, and then as we always ask you to do like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. That way, uh, I mean, we cleared that 4,000 mark. So shout out to all the people who've subscribed and even more of you could do so. We'd appreciate it. YouTube.com slash Pantalaircom. First question right here comes from Jake Hyper 09 says, Hey, thanks for doing these every week. It's a fun watch. Do you think Pitt lands Elijah Dotson and what's your ceiling floor and most likely numbers for the win total? Thanks. Um, so Elijah Dotson, uh, currently rated as a three-star wide receiver at Belleville high school in Detroit, uh, I think pitch recruiting him more as a defensive back, probably as a safety. He's announcing his commitment tomorrow, Saturday, um, Saturday afternoon, I think around three o'clock. And it's like Pitt, Penn state, Michigan, Michigan state, or the, the final four. I think that's what he's choosing from. And I think Pitt's in pretty good shape here. I, I think they have a great chance of landing him. He's been to Pitt a bunch of times. Uh, most recently visited in March. He also visited last April. I think he's been there in between. 
and he's uh, a top target on the board. You know, I mean, I think he's he's a priority target for Pitt. He's got a great relationship with Archie Collins, and I think Pitt has a really good chance of landing him, and he'd be a great piece to add. I think he's one of those guys that has a chance, and this is probably the kiss of death, and I'm sure people on the message boards will point it out as such, but uh, I think he's got a chance to, uh, you know, he's one of those guys who right now is a, a 5.7 three star so on the rivals rating system you know the stars five star four star three star two star but within that there's sort of a range a range on the rivals rating system and the three stars are up to 5.7 if you move to a 5.8 on the rivals rating scale um that moves into four star territory so if you're a 5.7 three star you're 0.1 away from a four star so the, the separation is not quite as drastic aesthetically it looks much better to have the fourth star than to have only three uh, but you're not that far away on the rating scale and i think elijah dotson looks like the kind of prospect who could take that 5.7 and, and bump up a little bit to you know potentially a 5.8 four star by the time you know january rolls around now that's the kiss of death i've said that about a lot of guys over the years only some of them have ended up as four stars more of them should have jordan addison caleb holmes come to mind um but i i think dotson has that look and i think he would be a pretty good get for pitt i think he's a good fit in pitt's defense and i think um they'll have a i, I think they have a good shot i think they have a good shot of landing him uh the second part of jake's question what's your ceiling floor and most likely numbers for the win total so this is <laughs> this is a million dollar question we talked about it on the wednesday uh morning pit did that over under five and a half wins talked about it on the live stream wednesday night and um I, I feel like they hit the over on on five and a half i i don't think this team is is going to be a five and seven team i think you know i go back to last year and say wow with with average quarterback play they win they're at least in a bowl game you know what i mean they at least win three more games average quarterback play they probably beat cincinnati they probably beat west virginia they probably beat wake forest they probably beat syracuse you know some combination thereof of those four games they win at least three i think um not to mention like the duke game uh so some combination of that you know, three wins out of those four, I, I think they end up with wins. And so that gets you to, you know, six wins that gets you to the over on five and a half. Now, granted this year's schedule is different, but I don't think it's all that much more challenging. If anything, I mean, the non-conference is less challenging because instead of Notre Dame, you have uh, Kent state. So that's a step in the right direction. I don't know how Cincinnati and West Virginia are going to be this year, but I don't get the sense that they're going to take a giant leap forward. I, you know, Cincinnati ended up being a three win team itself last year. Uh, I don't know what West Virginia is going to be this year. They weren't supposed to be very good last year and they, they ended up being better than Pitt for sure. But you look at the rest of the schedule. I mean, there's Virginia, there's Boston college Syracuse. I think he's going to hinge a lot on how Kyle McCord does after transferring in from Ohio state. And then I think Cal is a bit of a question mark too. I don't think they look all that great. You've got some challenging road trips in SMU and North Carolina, um, you know, and obviously, and then there's the Clemson game, you know, six wins should, uh, should be attainable here. Um, like the floor, realistically, the floor for what this team, I mean, sure, it could be four wins. This offense could fall flat on its face. Quarterback could not be very good. The defense could be very porous. So, I would say four wins is the floor and, and I make it four instead of three uh, just because you're replacing Notre Dame with Kent state. So I, I think you bump that number up by a little bit. Um, as far as the ceiling, I mean, given the schedule, I guess the ceiling's probably nine wins. And, and I mean, that's the ceiling. I'm not necessarily predicting that or, or saying I expect that or uh, really think that it will happen. My guess is it'll probably be, around seven is my guess but but i mean it's so hard to get I, like i i feel like i have to temper the expectation a little bit just because we don't know what the offense is going to be we have no idea what this offense is going to look like schematically we don't know what the personnel is going to look like how the players are, how the personnel is going to function in this new offense and then there are major holes and question marks on defense um i i think i i lean towards six or seven just because it's not that hard to get to a bowl game in college football. You have to really screw up to fall short of a bowl game. And Pitt obviously really screwed up last year. Um, you know, worse than we've seen them screw up in 30 years uh, or 25 or whatever it ended up being or 28. Um, 
so I, you know, I, I don't see that happening again. I don't see another bottoming out. I don't see them hitting that floor of four wins, which is where I think it is. But I also don't really see them hitting that ceiling of nine. So somewhere in the six to eight. And, you know, the, the higher you go, the more it's going to be sort of the ball bounces the right way. You get a, you know, a pick six on a shovel pass, right? Uh, you know, like that Clemson game in 2021. It'd be a huge play there by Servassier Dennis. You, you get one of those kind of plays that turns the – Turns the course of the game. I mean, Braylon Lovelace under the scoop and score at Virginia Tech last year should have been that, but Pitt couldn't tackle uh, in the running game on the perimeter. And so it ended up being a moot point, or moot six points, as it were. Um, we don't have to use that this season. You know, if there's a touchdown that ultimately doesn't matter in the outcome of the game, we'll, we'll call it a moot six points. I like that. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm probably in that area. Six to eight wins is, is most – realistic I, I can't really pick a specific number because again there's just so much uncertainty and so many questions about this team uh matthew spear says why does everyone think rodney hammond is injury prone he's been consistent for three years and has the potential to be pitt's most consistent offensive threat this year thoughts uh let's bring up rodney hammond's stat sheet what do you think okay uh let's bring up his season by season of what he's done, what he's played, uh, and and what it has looked like. Let's see. 2021, his his freshman year, uh, he played 227 snaps um, over the course of... Wait, I should have the total games here. Uh, let's bring up another one of his stat pages. There's, there's a couple a, a couple to look at. Like the pit the official pit site will give you his total games played. All right. So in 2021, he played 12 out of 14 games. I'd say for a running back, that's pretty solid. 2022, he only played eight out of 14 games. Now, but we know what happened there, right? In the West Virginia game, the opener, after playing 32 snaps, he uh, bent his ankle in the wrong way. You know, I mean, like it, it, like I don't think you're injury prone if you if you have that play and you then can't play again until week eight, which is ultimately when he came back for the Louisville game and played in eight games and play, still played more than 200 snaps. Um, I don't think you're injury prone if that happens. Uh, now, last year, last year's an interesting test case, and I, I don't know if we'll ever get an honest answer on this. He played every game last season at a career high 118 rushing attempts, although that was only a little bit more than he had. I mean, in 2022, he had 109 attempts in eight games. Uh, the year before, he had 102 attempts. So he's averaged right around the same number of attempts every year. But when you look at 2023 um, and and his his snaps and his, his rushing totals, let's look at, you know, game by game on carries. Five attempts against Wofford, six against Cincinnati, 14 against West Virginia, 14 Carolina, seven Virginia Tech, 11 Louisville, three Wake Forest, six Notre Dame, 13 Florida State, 12 Syracuse, 15 Boston College, and 12 Duke. No, well, I don't get that. All right. By, by all indication, I mean, he might have been a little banged up coming out of spring camp with, or out of training camp. I think he had a shoulder or something like that that maybe slowed him down. But he got healthy at some point and still never saw his carries really go up. And this was one of the more confusing questionable Andre Powell personnel decisions that we've seen over the years. We've seen a few, you know, it's, it, it, there, there's no shortage of them. Uh, but for whatever reason, he just did not use Rodney Hammond. Now, maybe if we could get some truth serum out of somebody, it would come out that he was, he was hurt all year, that he was banged up and he was just never really ready, but it certainly didn't seem to be the case. It certainly seemed like Powell was just making those decisions and it didn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't personally think on uh, Rodney Hammond is injury prone. All right. I think that, um, I mean, number one, he plays the position that's probably most likely to take an injury out of any on the football field. You know, I'd like to see the stats of like percentage of injuries and time missed by position. I got to think running backs about as high as you're going to get, uh, just because you take such a, a pounding, um, at that spot. I mean, linemen are obviously going to be high up on the list. They get rolled up and all that kind of thing, but just, like aches and pains, bumps and bruises, little injuries that end up costing you time. I can't imagine another position takes more of those than running back. Is Rodney Hammond particularly injury prone compared to other running backs? I don't think so. 
Again, I think the injury he suffered in 2022 was the kind of thing that would cost a lot of guys games. You could have the toughest dude on the field who's never missed a game, and if his ankle bends that way, he's going to probably miss seven or eight games. It's not, you know, unheard of. Uh, it's not, And it's not crazy to think that. Uh, so I don't personally think Rodney Hammond is injury prone. I think he's a really good running back, and I, I think he's durable enough. He's going to miss time because running backs miss time. I think it's just sort of naturally what happens. And maybe he was able to play all 12 games this past season because they limited his snap counts or limited his rushing attempts. I say give him a full workload. Um, I think there are some other good backs on this team, so if you end up losing him for a bit of time, then I, I think you can still survive that. I think you should give him a workload. Uh, but I don't think he's necessarily injury prone. That's just me, though. Uh, SV Pig One says, "Seeing the portal era alive and well, will this influence recruits' choice of schools? Example: Go to Pitt to start as a freshman and sophomore, and then chase the bag, versus going to Ohio State and not playing potentially until your junior year." So th this is an interesting thing that I I've, I've thought a lot about, uh, and not just uh, the scenario you're talking about. If a guy goes to Pitt thinking, oh, I'm going to go here for a year or two, and then I'm going to be able to go get a big transfer deal, an NIL deal at uh, um, at Ohio State or someplace like that. But even like moving down a step or two, if you don't have good options, you go to Youngstown State or you go to Akron. You know what I mean? Whether it's FCS or, or you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, group of five or whatever it may be. You go to one of those schools thinking, I'm going to go here. I'm going to show what I can do and develop for a year or two and then and then make a move. Um, it's going to be incredibly frustrating for schools at that level. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, I could see guys making that kind of decision. Now, if ultimately there end up being restrictions on, you know, how long you have to stay to school or something like that, then, then the, the whole sort of, uh, equation will change. But I, I kind of see that sort of thing. Ha I could see that sort of thing happening. I mean, we've talked a lot about Anthony Johnson, you know, from Jeanette, who ends up, you know, Bowling Green, but he transfers down to Youngstown State, works his way back up to Illinois. DeMonte Diggs um, from, where's he from, McKeesport or something, went to Youngstown State, goes into the transfer portal after a little while. Uh, you know, I could see guys making a business decision of going to a lower level where maybe they can show their talents and then trying to strike it rich in the transfer portal. Now, does it end up, you know, filtering up to, you know, guys going to pit under the same premise? Like I'm going to choose pit where I can play sooner over Michigan, where I might have to wait longer. So I'm going to go to pit. I'm going to get a decent NIL. I'm going to play sooner. And I'm going to parlay that into a, a bigger deal, a bigger contract. I'm going to bet on myself, right? These guys always want to bet on themselves. Well, this would be betting on yourself. Um, I could see that happening. I don't. I don't know if it'll be commonplace necessarily, but yeah, I could see some guys having that mindset. Uh, and if they is if they come in and help you win, good. You know, maybe you could come up with the nil to keep them. Uh, let's see. STR61166 says, if we assume Lowe and Leggett are the two leading scorers on the basketball team next season, who do you feel is most likely to be the next two? Any mix of, say, Dunn, Corin, Austin, Guillermo, or go outside the box and say Brandon Cummings or someone not even on the roster yet? Uh, would think Dunn and Corin might be the safest bets, although they would really be upping their minutes from last season. That's an interesting question. I, I don't even know. <laughs> Look, so obviously this question was asked. Wh when did you ask this question? on Wednesday morning, all right? And on Wednesday night, we reported that Pitt has a, a 6'7 Bosnian wing who shoots 42% from three on campus for an official visit right now. And that, I think, changes the equation. I, I think the more people have looked at, uh, I guess I'm going with Amsel, Amsel, or Amsel Delalich, Delalich, uh, yeah, I, I, and I apologize for butchering the name, but I guess that's what I'm going with. Um, the more we've looked at him, the more excited I think Pitt fans have gotten about the potential of bringing him onto this roster and the role he could fill as a four or a three or two, a big six, seven guy who can stand outside and shoot and pass and has a little bit of a handle. I mean, this is quite an, you know, would be quite an addition if they were able to land him. And I think he jumps into that conversation as potentially a top four scorer. He looks like he's got that kind of scoring ability. So we have to include him in the conversation as well. I, th I think, I, th I honestly think Damian Dunn will be 
a top four scorer for this team. I think, you know, some of that might be based on minutes and it'll depend on how much time he gets because they've, they've got kind of a loaded backcourt, but I think he's part of what makes it such a loaded backcourt. Jeff Capel compared his uh, some of his skills to Jamarius Burton, his ability to, to find his shot, you know, spot up shooting, that kind of thing. Um, and I think if you have that kind of skill set and it seems like Damian Dunn does, then you know, I think he, I think he could play his way into a top four scoring role. So I mean, your top four scorers could be in some order: Low, Leggett, Delalich. Oh, that's that's terrible. That's a terrible pronunciation. It might be right, but it sounds awful coming out of my mouth. Um, or or done or and done, I should say. You know, those four guys I I could see being the leading scorers. But I think Cam Corn is going to average nine or ten per game, maybe more. Um, I think Zach Austin's going to chip some in. I think the Diaz Graham twins are going to score. I, like they're going to have a lot of options, particularly if they add this kid, they're going to have a lot of options all over the court of guys who can score in different ways. And it's going to be really, uh, interesting to watch adding, adding this guy, I, I think changes the equation and changes the look of this team for the better. You can change your look for the better with backshoreapparel.com. Go check out backshore and uh you know get ready for the beach i I like i'm taking a beach trip in july i think we're going and you better believe this hat is going to be on this head all vacation the whole time i'm at the beach you know sitting on the beach this hat is going to keep because look you only see the front of this mug the back back here it's thinning out to the point where i need to take measures to keep it safe this hat is going to keep it safe. So shout out to Mike. He's a big Pitt fan. He's giving you a discount. Pitt 10, P-I-T-T-1-0 is the discount code to get 10% off your order at BackshoreApparel.com. Go check it out now. Go check out the hats. Go check out the Beach Tech hoodies. It's great stuff. BackshoreApparel.com. Of course, check out the website, PantherLair.com, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com to get all of your pit sports news and then our youtube channel right here youtube.com slash pantherlair.com like this video and subscribe so we don't miss any of our pit video content right all right thanks so much for tuning in today thanks for just for tuning in all week thanks for submitting questions for the mailbag it's been a lot of fun i hope you've had a great week i hope you have a great friday and a great weekend and we will talk to you on monday for the morning pit right here on youtube.com slash pantherlair.com